Good morning. I am Major General Nick Pope, the Chief of Defence Staff's Senior Communication Officer at the Ministry of Defence in London. The focus of the international media for the last few months has, understandably, been centred on the Arab uprising and the situation in Libya. But we must not forget that the Ministry of Defence is also involved in a counter-insurgency campaign in Afghanistan. Today, I want to give you an update on the latest events from the Helmand province. Throughout the winter months, British, Danish, Estonian and American troops, working in close concert with Afghan National Security Forces, have maintained a high tempo of operation. A smooth handover from 16 Brigade to 3 Commando Brigade has enabled this momentum to be sustained. I spoke yesterday to Brigadier Ed Davis, the commander of Task Force Helmand in Afghanistan. Ed saw his challenge as maintaining this momentum, staying on the front foot as it were, in the areas of security, governance and development. Ed told me that the next focus of the next few months will therefore be threefold. First, we can expect to see Task Force Helmand continuing to build on the gains of the winter in order to protect the Afghan people. This will of course include further fracturing of the insurgents' networks, the continuing degradation of their command structures and removing their capabilities. We will continue to clear the insurgents out of the population centres and prevent their return. Second, and more importantly, we will continue to build up the capability and professionalism of the Afghan National Security Forces. Degrading the insurgency is important in terms of protecting the population and reducing the residual threat that will remain post-2014. But it is building up the ANSF that will deliver a stable Afghanistan that can look after its own security and represents our way out. I'll return to the ANSF in a minute. And third, building Afghan capacity in all areas, such as local and national governance, and reformation of the Afghan MOD and the Ministry of Interior. And this will be our focus as Afghan forces begin to take the lead. Moving on to Operation Omid Haft, or Hope 7. In recent weeks, British forces from all three services have been supporting hundreds of Afghan soldiers from 215 Brigade in carrying out a major operation to clear insurgents from one of the last remaining strongholds in central Helmand. Operation Omid Haft was planned and executed by the ANA, operating in partnership with ISAF troops. The initial phase has involved clearing harsh and hostile terrain where the insurgents have intimidated and threatened the Afghan population for many years. This decisive or kinetic phase began on the 26th of May and concluded on the 5th of June. This is the longest period the ANA have been in the lead out on the ground as it were and it represents a significant and tangible improvement in their capability. The next and much longer phase is one of holding and consolidating, and I'll offer a few takeaways. Earlier this week, just days after the start of the operation, more than a hundred key community figures and village elders attended a shura, or gathering, in the village of Loimande Calais, hosted by the district governor. The security was provided by the Afghan National Security Forces, with members of the police searching people on arrival, and the army providing a security cordon around the Shura. An event like this, in this area, simply wouldn't have been possible a few weeks before the start of the operation. At the meeting, held in the centre of the village, District Governor Habibullah spoke passionately and enthusiastically about his plans to redevelop the area and return it to its former state. He encouraged the locals to register shop ownership with the Mayor and asked everybody to help do their part to restore prosperity to the previously ravaged village. Work on the development projects discussed at the Shura is already underway. Local contractors have been employed to start the clearance of the old derelict shops. And Royal Engineers 
from the Counter Improvised Explosive Device Task Force have cleared more than 18 IEDs from the village to enable the safe passage of people, equipment and materials needed for the project. I said that I would return to the development of the ANSF. The growth in numbers of the security forces continues ahead of schedule, with the recruitment rates remaining high. In terms of the Afghan National Army numbers, the October target of some 160,000 personnel has already been reached. Leadership capabilities are growing fast. There were less than 2,000 trained NCOs in November 2009. Now, 18 months later, there are 16,000 NCOs an eightfold increase. And from a lo very low baseline, literacy levels are expected to reach 50% in the next three years. It's a question, therefore, of growing both quantity and quality. The results are readily seen in Helmand. ANA soldiers were not only front and centre of the clearance phase of Operation Omid Haft, they are now manning a number of checkpoints in the hold phase of the operation. Their competence, confidence and willingness to take the lead has demonstrably improved in the last few months. There are also encouraging signs in terms of Afghan National Police development. The ANP provided the security for the municipal council elections in Lashkagar on the 30th of April. They have been conducting framework operations and had the capacity to man checkpoints on the extremity of the areas cleared during Operation Omid Haft. Ed Davis assesses that the ANP are absolutely where they need to be in development terms when matched against transition timelines. Finally, a quick plug for the Afghan local police, where there is a positive story to tell. The creation of the ALP has been an Afghan-led initiative, both at government and district level, to bolster security at the local level whilst the AMP capability continues to grow. There are some 10,000 ALP across Afghanistan and of these some 500 exist in five sites in Helmand. Led by the Chief or Deputy Chief of Police and under local command and control arrangements, ALP forces can shape and hold ground without ISAF clearance. In the longer term, we can expect this force to transition into the Afghan National Police or reintegrate back into society. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon with another update.